Here we are at the beginning of stage two. In this stage, we'll take each of the quarters that we cut to length, we'll plane it flat, then we'll sand it, then shape it, then we'll do the first cut on the first cut jig, and then final sanding for a finished blank. Here's a closer look at the setup that I use for flattening the quarter rounds. I use a DeWalt router, DW618, one and a quarter horsepower. It's outfitted with a one inch straight cutting flat bottom bit. This is a dust shroud hooked up to my dust collector, which helps to minimize the amount of uh, material that's thrown around the shop. This is the Greg James planer. Here's the section where the quarter round is held to be flattened. This is the first cut jig. We'll get to that later. This is the Lee Valley Veritas low angle block plane, and that would ride in these rails to finish off the flattening of the quarter round. I also have a dusting brush that helps to keep the dust away from this section of the planer so that the quarter round can sit flat. This is the sled that I built for the router to ride in. It's made of plywood and screws. If we take a closer look, you can see the router can slide back and forth, but it can't get out. So it's kind of held there. That's important for safety. This is a shim, which I will explain. It's just a loose shim that the router, this end of the router rides on, and it needs to be within those marks so that when it finishes the first cut it drops down and then we can push it back and complete the second cut. The reason that we have to do two cuts, if I put in here one of the quarter rounds, when a router is operating if you use your right hand and you point your thumb down because the bit is, is uh, facing down the, directions that, the direction that your fingers curl is the direction of the bit rotation. So the bit is rotating this way as we go this way through the cut. What happens is if you do it in one pass, the entering cut is fine, but the exiting cut wants to blow out this side of the quarter round. In order to prevent that, you put the shim and it tilts the router up just a little bit so that you leave some material, you're not hogging off as much material on this side. Then when the router drops down, our bit is obviously still going in the same direction, but now we're going this way. So the bit is entering this side and exiting on this side. So now we have a safe cut over here and we're only taking off a little bit more material that we didn't get on the first pass, but this side has already been cut all the way. So there's no blowout on this side when the bit is exiting, when we're coming back the second direction. This was a solution that I needed to, co needed to come up with because I was getting some of the blanks uh, with too much blowout on this side. So this solves the, uh, the problem of blowout. This step of the operation is very loud and it's very messy. So I'm gonna suit up and I'll meet you back here in a few seconds. At this point, it's a good idea to double check that we're getting the results that we want. So what I'm looking for in the blank is I measure it in three spots. On one end, and I want it to be over, the, over or around that 30. 
I check it in the middle, and you can see we're pretty consistent, and I check it at the other end. And that's what we're looking for, an even thickness throughout. A quick note on the reason that I'm wearing protective gloves. When you finish flattening the quarter round, these edges become very, very sharp, almost like a knife. And I've had more than one mishap where I've sliced my finger open. So I wear these and I'm extremely careful because these edges become very, very sharp after you're finished flattening them. At this point, we need to insert one small step. As I mentioned earlier, after flattening with the router and the block plane, the edges of the quarter rounds become very sharp, almost like a knife. So we have to do something so that they're not so sharp when we work with them in the next step. You can use sandpaper. Uh, I choose to use a block plane because it seems much faster. So I have my Lee Nielsen uh, violin maker's plane and I take, try to hold it at 90 degrees Do 20 swipes on one side. Twenty swipes on the other side, and then it's not sharp and it's a lot easier to work with in the next step. So I'll go ahead and get started doing the rest of these and I'll meet you in the next step. We're now ready to sand each blank. To do that, I use sandpaper that's glued to glass. The glass measures eight by 10, and I use Norton Job Packs, the three by Pro Sand. When you take the 11 by nine inch sheet and you cut it in half, you end up with five and a half by nine and I glue that down to the glass using 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. So you spray a thin even coat on the back, I lay it onto the glass and then I have a Hobby J roller that I use to roll it down and then I use these sheets of plywood to set on top of it and then I put weight on that to ensure that it dries perfectly flat. And I store these pieces of glass with the sandpaper with the plywood on top just to ensure that everything is staying as flat as it possibly can. So at this point what I would do is take each blank and I'll show you this in just a second, a close-up, but when you rake this in the light it's very glossy. After it comes off of the planer using the block plane it has a, a real nice shine to it. When we take it and we sand it, then it becomes dull. And in that way, you can see if it is perfectly flat. This being our reference surface, um, once we're done with the sanding, it should have an even dullness to it. If there's any shine left, you know that you're not perfectly flat. Uh, the pattern that I use as I lay this down is a figure, uh, not a figure eight, but I, I go in circles this way. When I reach halfway, I go in circles the other way. On my return trip, I go back and forth. Then I turn the blank around and I start from the other end. I go circles this way, circles this way, and then I go up and back the return trip. In that way, I'm ensured that I've evenly sanded and I'm not favoring one way or another and taking it out of flat unnecessarily. After I do that pattern, I'll rake it once again in the light and I'll see whether or not there are any high spots or shiny uh, spots left that we need to take another trip. If this happens too much, what it might be indicating is that the back was not flat enough sitting in the planer. And when you do the block plane, the block plane will push any inconsistencies uh, down if it's not being supported uh, while it's being planed. So then when the planer, when the block plane is not planing, then it'll snap back. Uh, it's like a spring. It'll spring back to the bow or the cup that it had uh, when, it, when it began the planning process. So sanding will indicate whether or not you're perfectly flat and we're going for a perfectly dull 220 grit 
surface after we're done sanding. Before we start sanding, I'm going to try to get this at an angle so that you can see how shiny the surface is after it's been block planed. So here you can see the surface is very shiny. When we check it after sanding, we'll need for all of that to be gone. When we sand, we don't want to put too much pressure on the blank. If we do that and there's a bow or a cup, if we're putting too much pressure down, we might be overriding that bow or cup and then it might look like it's flat because it's all dull, but by overriding it, it's not actually flat. So what we want is as light a touch as we can get on the back of the reed. So holding it very lightly, I start in circles. I reverse at the halfway mark. And then I go straight up and back for the return trip. Then I flip the blank around. As light as I can holding it. Start with my circles. Reverse at the halfway mark. And then straight up and back for the return trip. Now when we check it, we'll see whether or not we got it perfectly flat. So this might be hard to see on camera, but raking it into light now, it shows a perfect dullness. And that indicates that we've gotten it perfectly flat. Now that the sanding is done, our next step is to shape the reed. To do that, I use the Greg James uh, shaper. This is the same shape as the Van Doren V12 reed. And I'll show you how this works. We take one of our blanks, and what I do is I examine the, the run of the grain to try to see if we have anything, uh, any favorability one way or the other. And then I measure so here I'm, I'm thicker on the closer end. So I always take the thicker end and I make it the butt end of the reed. So I take that and there's a stop in here, put it right up next to the stop, close it down, tighten. Then I always double check to make sure that we're centered and clamp down. I put it in the holder and I come in with my chisel going bevel up at a low angle and I take my first cut. Flip it around, same low angle, first cut. Then I flip the chisel bevel down to do a final cleanup cut on both sides. And now we have something that's starting to look like a clarinet reed blank. Now that we've shaped the blanks, it's time for the first cut. So I use my first cut jig, place the reed, and then slide the holder forward and lock it down. Then we take our block plane have our first cut. Our final step in this stage is to sand each of the blanks to 0.128 thousandths of an inch. So when I measure the blank, I come in behind the first cut at the crest of the first cut and I measure right there. Here you can see I'm at 0.129 thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to sand what I think is going to be the appropriate amount, and in this case, probably just 
halfway up this way. And then halfway up, flipping the blank around. If I measure again, I'm trying to shoot for that point 128, and you can see we've hit point 128. So this blank is done. At the beginning of stage two, we started with 51 quarter rounds. At the end, we're left with 43 finished blanks. The reason that we lose uh, blanks throughout the process, through the steps of stage two, uh, for example, if you go to shape the reed and the chisel grabs the grain because it's running in a funny direction and it rips it rather than shearing it, then you lose that blank. Or if something goes wrong during the planing and there's too much of a bow in the back and maybe the block plane is pressing down, so then when you go to flatten it on the sandpaper, you have to work too long uh, to get that to get that belly out of the blank and then you lose too much material so it becomes too thin. Um, but at any rate, starting with 51 and ending up with 43, that's pretty good and that's pretty average for the batches that I go through. Again, the block plane will only last so long before the blade becomes dull, so that's why I am averaging around 50 to start and ending up with this many at the end is pretty good. For the next stage, I'll select five of these blanks and prepare them for profiling and then clipping and playing. So that's very exciting. I hope you'll join me in the next video. See you then.